Hello, everybody. Welcome to my Facebook Live on March 11th. We've got a beautiful day here in Wisconsin. The weather was actually pretty good. This morning when I was out, it was about 32 degrees. And I noticed something really strange. There was a young couple walking down the street. And um, the girl had on a sleeveless dress with bare legs, bare arms, and um, little decorative boots. And it was 32 degrees. So that's Wisconsin. It's crazy. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Sandy. Welcome. I'm going to get my computer set up here so I can see comments when they come up. Here we go. Whoops, that's an old Facebook Live. There we are. Oh, there I am. That's what I'm wearing. Yes. Yes, it is. Hi, Julie. Hi, Sarah. Long time no see. Hi, Sandy. Becky's watching. Excellent. Becky, we missed you today at our meeting. We had a team meeting this morning, so I've had a really busy weekend. Um, I had, well, last week was like, oh my gosh. Hi, Sandy Schmidt. That's my aunt. She is so sweet. She does not stamp, but she likes to watch me. Hi, Elaine and Julie. Thanks for sharing. Carol, welcome. So this last week, um, Let's see, on Wednesday, I had to take Anna down to Freighter. She had three different doctor appointments. And for those of you that don't know, Anna is my stepdaughter. And she's had some horrible complications with a hysterectomy. And so when somebody goes in for a routine hysterectomy, just know that their whole, whole world can be torn apart. And that's exactly what's happened to her. So Wednesday, we were at Freighter in Milwaukee for three different appointments. We didn't get home till like 6.30 at night. And Milwaukee is about, I'd say like an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes from us. So, and then um, Friday, we had to go back for another appointment. And the best thing that came out of that was we got to eat at the Cheesecake Factory. Woot, woot. <laughs> That seems to be our favorite place. It's our third time there, and we've never had cheesecake. So their food is really good. Absolutely love it. Um, hi, Kathy. Hi, Lucy. Oh, thanks, Lucy. You appreciate that my Facebook Lives actually come on when they're posted. Yes, I've been very diligent about that. I set a timer on my um, phone telling me, okay, it's time to get set up and get ready to go live. So thanks for that. Thanks, Matia, for sharing. Lisa, thank you. Hi, Kathy. Um, Kathy, Freighter in Milwaukee is the best. The doctors there have just been incredible, and we've really lost faith in our local um, doctors. The nurses at our local um, hospital are fabulous, but the doctors, were not too happy with them. So she's seeing all specialists, and Anna is going to be having surgery on Thursday to repair her torn bladder that has been leaking since the beginning of December. Yeah. It's been horrible. So if I could ask for your thoughts, good wishes, sending good juju, your prayers, whatever it is that you do, um, if you could send a few Anna's way, we would really, really be appreciative because the surgery has to work. That's like, that's where we're going. It has to work. We have to get this girl's life back to normal. And um, she's been through living hell. So hi, Laura. Hi, Kelly. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Linda. Um, appreciate it. So um, I've just got a few things that I want to tell you about today. Let's see. Okay, so I said I was in I was in Milwaukee on Wednesday. I was in Milwaukee on Friday. Friday night, I had a card buffet with my um, close friend and fellow demonstrator, Kathy Miller. And we also had that another card buffet Saturday morning. During January, February, and March, we do Friday night, Saturday morning because... Um, in Wisconsin, we don't have a lot of other things to do. So we get a much bigger attendance. And plus, it's celebration. Don't forget about that. Celebration ends. Um, hi, Kathy Stotts. Um, celebration ends on March 31st. And that will be your last opportunity when you place a minimum $50 order. You get to choose a free item from the celebration brochures, and there are two of them. We have a second release that came out February 16th. So, for each $50 you order, you get to choose 
um, a free item. And we also have level one, $50. We have level two, $100. So um, if you want some of the bigger items, when you put in a $100 order, you can get those for free. So it's pretty cool. Um, that was something new this year that has been going over wonderfully, and um, I'm excited. I was really sad today. I don't know where I put it now. <laughs> Shocking. But I lost the U from my amazing U thinlets. So, but I found them. Woo! Hi, Lisa Johnson. She's at the pool with her granddaughter and daughter. So you can't hear me very good. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing pretty good. So... Busy week, and then this morning, um, let's see, that yesterday I got ready for this Facebook Live, and then this morning I had a team meeting. Oh my gosh, we had a blast today. And um, as soon as I turn my camera around, I will show you guys the cards that I got in our team meeting swap, because they are very spectacular. Absolutely love them. Um, Want to thank you guys all for joining me. Um, this has been really fun. I'm really liking this Facebook Live thing. I think it's a good venue for me because I'm kind of a fly-by-the-seat-of-my-pants type of person. And, of course, there's nothing like flying by the seat of your pants being live, right? <laughs> That's pretty crazy, but I guess I'm doing okay, I think. Um, let's see. We need to announce winners. We have, and I've got my little note here, um... I don't know if Joanne is on, but Joanne Chamberlain. Oh, good, that's backwards. You can't even hardly read it. Um, Joanne, you won for leaving a comment. You won the drawing. So I will be sending out some happy mail for you this week. Watch, watch in your mailbox. I think I have to go to the post. I do have to go to the post office tomorrow to mail out a swap to Minnesota. So um, I will get the everything packaged up and addressed and in the mail for our winners. And then we have for um, sharing this video. So if you share this video, you also get entered in a drawing. We have Heather Kohler. Oh, um, Joanne Chamberlain is from Mount Lake Terrace, Washington. Heather Kohler is from right here in Menasha, Wisconsin. So Heather, congratulations. And then we have Kay Ackers and Kay is from Boise, Idaho. Kay is getting, um, she won the drawing for placing an order this week in my online store. So congratulations, you guys. And I will get those out in the mail to you tomorrow. Everybody loves happy mail. And I wanted to thank, too, the people that I've been sending prizes to. My gosh, you guys are so gracious. I get messages saying, you don't even know how that brightened my day when I opened my mail and I had a, a prize in there from you. So awesome thank you you guys are so appreciative and i really appreciate that stampers are the nicest people right i know okay let's see what else do i need to talk about um i told you last week i took Haley um, shopping for big girl interview clothes she's my daughter she's in college and she's getting her degree in teaching and she's student teaching right now so this is her last semester i'm also excited to tell you that my husband paid her last tuition payment <laughs> <laughs> no more. Woohoo. Okay, that's pretty exciting. Um, and so she had a job fair yesterday, and that went really good. She said it was pretty valuable information for her. It was her first one. So she got to wear her big girl interview clothes that we got last week. And oh, and this sweater, the sweater I bought while we were shopping for her big girl interview clothes, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's one of those really thin weave sweaters, and I love this color. So, hello, Lori. Oh, hi, Haley Atchison. I was just talking about you and your big girl clothes and your big girl job um, fair yesterday. So, Haley's on here watching, too. Hi, Sandy. And then, what else? My husband should be clomping in the house any minute. He went down to um, my stepdaughter, Stephanie, lives about 60 miles south of us. And she just bought half of a duplex a couple weeks ago. And, oh, my gosh, it is so gorgeous. Like, I want one. <laughs> Um, and my husband's pretty happy about that because he wants to get out of this house. He's kind of tired of fixing it. Hi, Haley. She says, hi, Mama. Um, so, yeah, and can I tell the whole world that I went and picked up her boyfriend from the locker room, which is a local establishment here in Menasha last night because he got in a little game with Haley's high school friends and he didn't come out on the winning end of the game, which involved alcoholic beverages. So I brought Jared home <laughs> pretty funny oh my gosh so 
little shenanigans in the old Atchison household last night. Um, so Steve should be clomping in the house any minute. And when he does, he's going to make a ton of noise. Just know that. And then he'll hear me in here talking to myself, which is pretty weird, right? And then he'll go, oh, she's shooting a video if he forgot that I'm doing my Facebook Live. So, and Jared says, thanks for the ride. Always, Jared, always. No problem. Right, Shelby? Good mama. Don't want these kids driving, right? Okay. Um, let's get started. I'm going to flip my camera around so I can show you these gorgeous swap cards. And then we're going to get started. I had um, a request from, um, I can't remember who asked for it, but somebody did, for uh, ink with embossing folders, Patty Hall. Patty asked for ink with embossing folders. That's a really cool technique, and it takes your embossing folders to a whole new level, right? Because we put paper in them, we run them through our big shot, and we get all kinds of great images. But um, you could also put ink on them and use them that way, and that is super cool. So I've got some great projects for you tonight showing you what I did with ink and embossing folders, and also some samples that are pretty not great. <laughs> so I want to show you it doesn't always turn out the way you hope it will and what to look for when you're choosing an embossing folder to do this technique. So that's what we're going to be concentrating on tonight. And if you guys have any suggestions for me, like Kelly, I would like to see ink on embossing folders. I would like to see you do this fun fold. I want to see this technique. Um, please let me know because um, I am happy to get some suggestions to help me figure out what I am going to do for next week and the week after and the week after. So I really appreciate that. Um, you guys, if anybody missed last week, here are the cards that, three of the cards that I made last week. There were a couple more, but um, this was an embossed resist technique with our Stampin' Blends alcohol markers and our Spring Foil Designer Series paper. This is a free option you can get right now with your $50 order. And somebody asked me the on the last time I was live, well, where do you order? <laughs> I forgot to say anything. You can order on my store. Um, my blog is www.astampabove.com. And when you put that in a search en engine, you're going to find me. You're going to find my blog. And then um, there's an online order button in the right-hand side. And when you place an order in my store, if it's under $150, I want you to... And I'll show you this right side up. You can't see this right now. Um, I want you to use this host code. Because when you do that, you get entered in a drawing for a free stamp set, which I do once a month. If your order's over $150, don't use the host code. You're going to get $15 in Stampin' Rewards to spend on anything you want yourself. And I will still enter you in the drawing. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Brooke. I just saw Cindy today at our team meeting. Brooke, I think, was there. Um, I do my Facebook Lives from my team meeting, too, for my demonstrators. So, and that brings me to another subject. Right now is the best time to buy our starter kit, which I also like to call our discount shopper kit. If you want to build a business, it's a starter kit. If you want to get a discount when you shop with Stampin' Up, it's a discount starter kit. It can be anything you want it to be. Hi, Sierra. Um, I have your prize from last week going out here, I think, in the mail tomorrow. The week before, I was going to put it in with your order, but you ordered online, so I couldn't do that. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. Um, discount starter kit. Discount shopper kit. You get to choose $125 in product of whatever you want. You get to add two stamp sets to that over and above the $125 of any price. They cannot be celebration sets. But if you took the most expensive stamp sets we have, you're looking at $226 in product and it only costs you $99 and no shipping. So um, that's a huge deal. It's like a no-brainer. So if you've got an order going in around $100, you should really consider buying that kit. And you can go right to my blog, www.stampabove.com. Click on Join My Team or Join Now right up in the top. There's some tabs. Click on that. It'll take you right there to order your starter kit. It's fabulous. You also get a paper pumpkin kit. That's another $20 on top of that. So it's really $246 worth of product for $99. Hi, Rosie. Um, 
So consider that celebration, and that's only during celebration that you get those two extra stamp sets. That's a big deal. Now, what happens after that? Do you have to put in a certain amount of orders? Do you have to, if you don't want to, you don't have to do anything. Hi, Judy, I miss you. Um, you can just do nothing. You can just get your starter kit and do nothing. But if you want to continue with the discount, you can do that through the end of June, free and clear. Once we hit the end of June, you need to maintain $300 a quarter. And so um, you would need to either get orders or buy $300. You can pick anything for the starter kit, Suzette, anything except celebration. Those don't have prices on them. So you can't get celebration items in your starter kit. You can pick cardstock. You can pick all stamps. You can buy the whole um, stamp and blend alcohol markers are $121.50 and add a little something to that. You can't go over the $125 limit, like not even buy a quarter. So you can pick anything you want. You can get a big shot. You can get a big shot and some framelits. It's completely up to you. So if you don't keep um, your minimum of $300 a quarter, if you don't meet that, nothing happens. You just are put on um, a, a, what do we want to call it? Your status is not active. If you can do $300, you'll maintain and be active for the next quarter. If you can't, you're just not active anymore. You don't have access to the Stampin' Up! Demonstrator website and so on and so forth. There are no penalties for that. And I have to tell you, my team has grown immensely during celebration by everybody taking advantage of this fabulous deal on the starter kit. So if you have any questions, you guys, feel free to pop me a private message on Facebook. You can email me at kelly at stampabove.com. I am happy to tell you and all about it and answer your questions. Another thing, on my blog, in the right-hand column, if you scroll down, scroll down, you'll see $99 kit. Click on that. It's got a ton of questions and answers in there and all the details. So really helpful. All right. Now we are going to, yes, Suzette, take advantage of it. <laughs> I would love to have you on my team. And even if we only have you till the end of June, I have a team Facebook page that we share tons of stuff. We broadcast the monthly team meeting live on that Facebook page. It's only available to my demonstrators and it is a fantastic place to be. Um, I know that I thoroughly enjoy sharing exclusive stuff with my team and also a way to get all your questions answered and other team members share what they're making and it's it's fabulous. You'll absolutely love it. All right, flipping the camera, hang tight. Let's make sure now if I happen to hit a button, you guys don't forget that you have to click on the title of my Facebook page to refresh your screen to come back on. If I accidentally shut this off, I just want you to know that. All right, so I did pretty good, looks like. Let's see, where's our middle? We're right here, all right. Okay, here we go. These are um, the swap cards from my team meeting today. Holy cow, they're absolutely beautiful. This one is by Sarah Simon. Look at how pretty that is. This is one of our stamp sets in the Occasions Mini Catalog. Here comes another one from the Occasions Mini Catalog. This is called Hold On To Hope, and it's a stamp set and um, framelit bundle. And this is by Tammy Litsky. And I just happen to have that right here. <laughs> Hold On To Hope. This is a beautiful stamp set designed by Brandy Cox. She is a demonstrator friend of mine. When you hit your million dollars in sales with Stampin' Up, you get to take a trip to the home office on them. You get a $10,000 check, and you get to design your own stamp set or bundle. And look at this. This cross is just, let me get this out of the way, amazingly beautiful. So, and Tammy did a really cool technique here with some um, masking, so that's cool. All right, let me get this out of the way. I'm going to be using this um, maybe next week, I'm hoping. I just got it um, opened up. Well, you saw me take it out of the package, right? But um, I really want to use this because I think it's beautiful. I think it'll be good for weddings. I think it'll be good for, like, um, baptisms, all kinds of stuff, even sympathy cards. Beautiful. 
Okay. And then this is by Cindy Rodell. Cindy is a brand new demonstrator to our group. And how pretty is that? You see these are popped up on dimensionals. These flowers are. And this is from the Blooming Baskets, which is a bundle with an embossing folder that is also free during celebration. And, oh, my embossing folder is, it's, it's someplace else right now. But isn't that pretty? And then I think this is Tammy Stomp. Look at this one. Isn't that fun? That's a neat little fold there. These two sides are glued down and there's just this little strip here. Very pretty. And then we've got this fairy card. This is by Patty Skiba. And this is just adorable, beautiful coloring. I love the designer paper she used in the background here. That's that one that has the paint chips in it. I can't remember what it's called. Um, oh, and look at that. Hope your day is magical. This is the Myths and Magic um, washi tape. Isn't that pretty? We're going to use that tonight, so I'm excited. Woohoo! And then we have this one by Rose, and isn't this gorgeous? We've got the Celebrate that is debossed. We have a couple embossing folders that are just the little strip ones, and this is one of them. Isn't that just beautiful? And then Rose used the Ticket Punch. Let me grab that because I haven't shown this in a video yet, but this is the Ticket Punch. I don't know if you can see that. The glare is probably weird, but that's what made this border around her celebrate spring and how pretty is this card oh my gosh just beautiful okay you guys I just had to share that you know how it is what else do I have to share oh if you missed um, if you're not a subscriber to my blog here is a card and a little triangle box that I made using the springtime foils and again these springtime foils this comes in the same pack with this beautiful background paper. And um, it's free with your $50 order. It's part of the second release of Celebration. And isn't this just a beautiful wedding card? This was for my One Stamp at a Time blog hop this week. And when we do One Stamp at a Time blog hops, we have to have a card and a 3D item. And this was my little 3D item. And I thought I could put some um, of my friend's favorite little candies in here. So super, super cute. This would also be great as um, wedding favors at a shower, maybe. Shower favors, that's a good one. Yeah, okay, there we go. All right, are you guys ready to rock? I am ready to rock. Hello, Cheryl, Shelby, uh, Karen, Kathy. What am I gonna show you first? Okay, I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to bring in my embossing folders. So I pulled out a whole bunch of them. Because when you do something like this, unless you've seen somebody else do it, you're like a little unsure what you should be starting with. So I am going to get my, um, what do we call this? Grid paper. Grid paper in here. Grid paper is something that is also available to you guys. You can order this in my online store, and it's a huge pack of paper. It's on a cardboard backing, and I use it a lot to measure with, so I love my grid paper. Let's see if I can get that centered here so I know to, where to be working. All right, so like I said, I tried out a whole bunch of different things with this technique, and I found some that worked great, some that worked but were a little tricky, and some that just you should not go there. <laughs> And we're going to get messy, so just know that. All right, so what I have here, you know what? I need to get my catalog out because I am not positive about all the names of these folders. I know most of them. Okay, this is the Petal Burst, and then these two are in the mini catalog, and they are called Petal Something or Another. Does anybody know what they're called? Let me look. Let me look. It's on the black. Here we go. Um, petal pair. I always forget that. So we've got the petal pair folders here. We've got the petal burst folder. We've got scattered sequins. I think that's what this is called. Fluttering something or another. Fluttering. I think that's all this is called. The butterfly one. And then the brick one. And let me just show you how to do this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the brick one. Um, nope. I'm going to start with the sequined one. No, we're going to start with brick. Okay, Kelly, just make up your mind. Dang it. We're going to start with the bricks. 
I brought in some Smoky Slate ink. And let me just grab a pile of white. These are just four by five and a quarter white scraps. And um, I'll tell you the, the sizes of everything that we're going to put on our cards, but these are just for sample purposes. So what you're gonna do here is you're going to open up your ink pad and you're gonna figure out which side of your embossing folder has the most flat surface. So the one that has the label on the front here, this is raised lines of the bricks. That's not what we want to put ink on. That's gonna be a mess. We want to put it on the one where the lines are indented. So it's kind of like you want to do it on the debossed side. So I'm just going to bring in my ink pad and I am going to, you can, you can pat it, you can rub it. This is going to shake my camera, so I hope you guys don't get sick. This one is a little drier, this ink pad is, so I'm just patting it here. Some of these you can rub, whatever works. Just try Try it if that doesn't look good. Another thing, if you hold your ink pad the wrong way and you try to do this, it's going to do that. So if you run into that problem, you're just going to turn your ink pad around and then you can pull it and it's not going to do that. Okay, so I've got ink on here. Let me close this up. And now we're going to bring in our Big Shot. And here's the trick. You do not want this to move. Hang on, I gotta look for my card here. I grabbed the wrong one. There we go. You do not want this paper to move once you put it on here. And because this is a definite pattern, like the bricks, you also want it to be on here straight, okay? So you're gonna close this up. Remember, your hinge for your folders always goes through your machine first. That will make them last longer. If you ever have any problem with those hinges cracking, it's because you're not running them through the machine first. Okay, hang on. Close your eyes if you're seasick. We're going to get a little bumpy. And here we go. Let me move this out of the way. There we go. Let the magic happen. Ta-da! Oh my gosh, super cool, right? So now we not only have the um, brick, but we have color on it. And that's what my cards are all about here tonight. Now, what do you do with this embossing folder? You do not ever want to use permanent ink on here like Stazon or our archival black or gray. That's a no-no because it will stay on. And I'm sure there's some solvents you can clean it with, but why go there? Always make sure you're using a water-based, um, is this what, yeah, water-based ink, just our regular ink pads. You just take this and rinse it in your sink and it, it, just, it just rinses right off. You don't have to touch it with a rag or anything. It's fabulous. So I'm gonna toss that over there and then I'm gonna bring in the card so we can actually make it. All right, I chose the myths and magic. Let me get this big shot out of the way. I chose the Myths and Magic and Magical Day bundle to go with these bricks because I thought, well, that's appropriate, isn't it? So here we go. I have all my cardstock layers here. So I chose Pacific Point is going to be my card base. I thought that was a really pretty bright color to go with this gray, right? And I'm forgetting to look at your comments, you guys. Oh, Colette, hi, I miss you, Colette. Thank you. Doesn't that look like berry burst on my fingernails? Thank you very much. Colette loves my fingernails. I just got them done this week. And Haley and I went because she needed to get her nails done for that job fair thing, right? Okay, this is four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And then we have... Um, Pacific Point, let's see, I determined that I didn't need that. Oh, you do need a scrap of that, I'm sorry. You, well, I've got a scrap here. Hang on, I'm just a little confused. So we've got Pacific Point scrap and a basic gray scrap. Then we've got an inside layer of white. This is four by five and a quarter. And then the front piece should be three and three quarters by five. 
So I am going to have to trim this piece down because that's what this was for. So just hang tight. Three and three quarters. Three and three quarters. Oops, that didn't cut all the way. Three and three quarters by five. Okay, now it's now it's the right size. Okay, I am going to stamp up the inside of my card here, bringing all my ink pads in. I did some coloring on this one because we're going to do some die cutting. So I guess what I should probably show you first is um, I did these scraps right here. I stamped with Versamark ink and the Hope Your Day is Magical on the Pacific Point and the Basic Gray. And then I hit it with the white embossing powder. And just to save a little time, you guys, I already have those embossed because you guys know how to do that, right? This isn't this isn't about um, embossing powder. We're about the background. So I also die cut the magical using this framelit that comes in here. So I die cut this with that and then this one is a little bit different. We're gonna take this one and we're going to cut these little words, hope your day is. This is just kind of a neat way to use words. And we're just gonna piece them onto our project. Okay, and we, we, I don't even need that, so that's going right in the, in the trash. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> then we have a big white scrap. And with our big white scrap, I've got my archival black here because we're going to be using an aqua painter to color in our images. So I want a good black ink that isn't going to smear when I hit it with the water. And I'm going to do my... Um, dragon guy and my little my little what do you call him my knight I almost called him my little soldier <laughs> but yeah he's my knight okay then aqua painter and this is how I did this I'm not going to get too crazy with the coloring but I do want to show you um, if you open your ink pad just a little bit like this and squeeze it you're going to get ink on the lid here and that's what I needed to do my coloring. You don't pull the ink directly off of your um, ink pad part. That doesn't work very good. I'm not really sure why. It's kind of weird, right? You would think you'd get great ink off of there, but you don't. I always like to have a tissue um, at my beck and call. Well, I guess I can't really call it, but you know what I mean. Um, when I use an aqua painter. So I came in and I'm going to dilute my Pacific Point just a little bit here. I don't want it to be too dark and I'm just gonna come in and color my dragon scaly parts with some blue. And then I came in and colored his little spiny deals. I don't know what those are called. I am not a dragon expert, <laughs> but I'm getting pretty good at coloring dragons. So I have that going for me. Maybe I can use that on some type of a questionnaire. What's your, what's my, my, what do they call that? What's your superpower? Well, I'm really good at coloring spiny things on dragons. So there. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now to clean off your aqua painter, you just wipe it back and forth until that color is gone. Then I'm going to come in with old olive. And again, I'm just going to dilute it a little bit here. And I always like to start by doing kind of an outline of an area because your your ink is like more defined on the when you first wipe it onto your cardstock or color it onto your cardstock so that gives you kind of the shadow effect right so I like to kind of do that and then once I color in the rest you can kind of see what I'm talking about and I am coloring right over that Pacific point then it turns it kind of a bluish green color which is I think pretty 
Um, my dragon is going to be very handsome. And again, I just kind of go, see, I need more ink there. That was a little weak. And that gives you that shadow effect that you can get with an aqua painter. And I'm not an artist. I mean, maybe I'm a paper artist, you might consider me. But I couldn't draw this dragon to save my soul. So I wouldn't consider myself an artist. But when you have good tools, it really changes the game. You can do some amazing thing if you have good quality products. And I have to tell you, um, years ago, my friend bought me an aqua painter for Christmas before I was a demonstrator. It wasn't this. It was something from Hobby Lobby or something. And um, I used it a couple times, and it was horrible. It leaked water all over. It was absolutely terrible. And so I threw it in a drawer and never used it again. And then when Stampin' Up! came out with aqua painters, I was in Salt Lake City at a convention, and I'm like, oh, geez, I've used those before. They're horrible. And I thought, well, I'll try them again, and realized that the aqua painter I had was just junk. It was just not good. So these are fabulous. You get two in a pack for like, I don't know, $16 or $17. They're good value. They last forever. So now what I've got here is pink, um, I'm sorry, powder pink. And... What am I going to do with powder pink here? I am going to do the skin on my little knight. And notice I'm rubbing some of the pink off. I don't want his face to be totally pink, but I want it to have somewhat of a skin tone. And that's the color that I chose. And doesn't that work great? Okay, so I'm not going to show you how to color in the rest of this because through the magic of TV, <laughs> ta-da, I already have this done. And I want you to know that with this um, Magical Mates Framelit set, you get the framelits that cut out this cute little dragon and this little guy. Where is he? He's, he's in here. My little knight. Here is the framelit to cut that out and the framelit to cut out the dragon. So you do not have to fussy cut these. And I know my friend Lisa Vandenelsen, she is very happy about no fussy cutting. Okay, so here's our cute little guys. And then let's get our card rolling here. And, oh, you know what? You know why this is all very confusing? Because I've got the wrong color of card base. Scrap this. I'm sorry. That's, I was so good. Like, why is that even in there? I need a piece of basic gray for my card base. And we're going to switch it up. We're going to do five and a half by eight and a half. Let me make sure that this is the right size. It is. We're going to fold that in half. If you wanted to do it the tall way, you would just do four and a quarter by 11 and score it in the middle. We're going to do this. And then remember this piece I said we didn't need. This is why we need it. So sorry for that confusion, you guys. Here goes a layer onto here and I love the way this blue pops against the gray. This is a great boy color combination, right? And then we're gonna take our embossing folder inked bricks. Blue really does work better when you're um, pasting embossing embossed layers onto your cards. That liquid glue is the best thing to use. Hang on, I'm having a little problem here. There we go. Okay, here we go. And then this card really does go together pretty fast. I'm going to use a couple dimensionals on my magical. You guys, have I shown you this trick where if you poke your fingernail into the middle of the dimensionals, it lifts up the edges and it's easier to get those backings off. I'm going to put that right there. And then I'm going to come in with my little night guy. And I've already got dimensionals on here through the magic of TV, mind you. Ooh, Denise is waiting for this bundle. Yes, it is super, super cute. I'm going to be posting on my blog, which then also goes to my Facebook, this Facebook page you guys are on. My stepdaughter, Anna, made a framed name frame for her daughter, Molly. Um, for her birthday this last weekend and she used this bundle with the sunshine and rainbows and oh my gosh you guys it is the cutest thing so it's got the name Molly on it and it's got little um the unicorns these unicorns unicorns and clouds and glimmer paper and <laughs> it was spectacular 
And I have to tell you this. Um, Anna was over last. She came over twice working on it. Notice I'm cutting apart these words now. And my Anna has never been a stamper. And she learned to stamp that day. I mean, she helped me a couple weeks ago um, with something, making some swap cards or something. But for the most part, she's not a stamper. And she made the cutest name frame ever for Molly's room. Okay, so here we go. Hope. Let's see if I have this spaced out right. This is kind of dangerous, not laying it out for a dry fit, right? Your... And these don't have to be perfectly um, level and whatever. This is just kind of a hodgepodge type thing. We're dealing with knights and dragons for Pete's sake. So, oh, I, I do have these kind of off-center, don't I? I just got done telling you. Well, it's going to be off-center. It's just going to be what it is. Okay, and then, what do you guys think of that? Isn't it cute? Then... We are going to do the inside, and what I decided to do with the inside, I've got my stylized birthday stamp here. I've shown this many times. It is a single stamp available, and I'm going to stamp it in the Pacific Point, and then we've got this cute little wizard guy, and you know that I like to decorate the insides of my cards, so I thought that this little wizard guy would be absolutely perfect. And then again, we would bring in our aqua painter, and I should really have my ugly little glasses on so I can see better. It's a lot of pressure coloring in front of you guys. Not that you're not amazing, mind you, but it's like, boy, I don't want to waste my time coloring something and, you know, like have it be all crummy and then have to redo it because you're waiting for me to be done with this. So I try to be a little speedier about it because, I don't know, I watching somebody color just doesn't do a lot for me. How about that? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to clean this off again. And I see that I just squeeze a little bit, whoops, too much water out there. That's why I have my Kleenex here, and I'm going to take that powder pink again and come in here. Leave his eyeball white color. Don't forget his hands. Just a little bit of color there. And there is the inside of our card. There we go. Perfect. So there we go, guys. Cute brick background, a little bit more than just the image embossed on here with the ink, right? Okay, we are going to, give me a second, what do we have? Do we have any questions? Hi, Andrea. Hi, Brenda. Any questions going on that I can answer while I'm kind of picking this stuff up and getting it put away so I can get on to the next cool project? We're going to use our aqua painter again, I believe. So I'll just leave that out here. And I just try to keep all my stuff. I have these little baskets, and when I'm getting ready for these Facebook Lives, I just put all this stuff in the basket. Uh-oh, where did I just go? Am I still alive? My internet must have had a hiccup here because... I am not seeing me. There I am. Okay, sorry guys. My screen just went blank like I went off the air. All right, there's card number one. Oh, I gotta put this away. Hang on. I lost the U, I told you that already. I lost the U and I couldn't find it any place and it was horrible and I was sick to my stomach. Um, but I found it, so I gotta keep this stuff where it belongs. All right, next. What is this card? Okay, let's do this card. This is really cute. So, I showed you the bricks. Now, let me see, where are my samples? Right here. I'll show you a couple more that I did that didn't turn out so great. How about that? So, we've got this, and I already forgot what it's called. It's called Petal Palettes. Petal Passion folders, that's what it is. And um, these are really cool. These are in the mini catalog, and I've used them for some really beautiful projects. But I thought I'd give them a try here with this technique, right? Okay, here we go. So, 
This one is on the side that is debossed. So I just inked that up. Again, the front here. Inked it up and ran it through, and this is Berry Burst. And I just wasn't really impressed with it. So I thought, you know, I need to show you guys the stuff that doesn't turn out so great either, right? Because you always appreciate me being real. Mistakes happen, I am not perfect, and I make a lot of stuff that never gets on camera. I shouldn't say a lot, but I do make stuff that doesn't get on camera because it's like, well, that didn't work. So here's one that I don't feel worked real well. And then I decided to run it through the other side. So um, I put ink on the other side and this is what it looks like and I'm not really excited about that either. So I would be giving this thumbs down because it eh, didn't work real good. So that was with this folder. Now, mind you, this folder is fabulous for embossing. So don't discount it, it's amazing. Then we did this one and I just did this one today shortly before I came on Facebook Live to see what this one would do. <gasps> Ta -da! And this one turned out fabulously. And again, I chose the side with the Stampin' Up! label on it. This is the side with the debossing. It's got the most flat surface. And I inked it up with Lemon Lime Twist and it turned out really, really good. So that was just a quick little sample I did. I didn't make a card out of this, but I'll see if I can figure something out. Um, and make a card with it. So that's these two Petal Passion folders. These come together in a pack and they are fabulous. All right, hang tight. Now I am going to, where's this one? Okay, so this is our scattered sequins and this is a new embossing folder in the Occasions mini catalog. And it makes little sequins on your paper. So I want to show you a couple different things that I did here. I made the mistake of inking up my ink pad because I felt it was kind of dry and that was not the best thing to do after I had already made my sample. Have you guys ever done that where you, um, you're stamping stuff and it looks great and it's just the right shade of what you want and then you ink up your ink pad? And now you're stamping it and now it's way darker and now you wish it was lighter and you wouldn't have done that. So that's what I did. So um, I will show you how, how this worked and then you can decide. <laughs> because it worked great the first time, but once I re-inked the ink pad, I wasn't so happy with it. So I'm just gonna come in here and this is Dapper Denim, by the way. This is a really pretty blue. I really like this blue. So I came in here and inked up, and again, this is the side with the Stampin' Up! emblem on it. It's the side where the, the sequins are debossed. I did find out something cool with this. Once I, once I you know, re-inked it and then wasn't so happy with the result, then I found out a cool technique, so I'll show you that too. This is how we find out this stuff. I'm gonna bring my cardstock in here, lay it down, and then we're going to get our big shot again. Well, it's not ours. It's mine. <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay. Carol, what did Carol ask? I missed what Carol asked. Shelby, you said, good question, Carol. Please, somebody ask me that question again because I missed it and I, I'm not seeing it. Let me see if I can click on see all. I don't want to screw anything up. Here we go. Nope, I can't see. Okay, hang on, because I just went away from my own thing. Oh, somebody's going to have to tell me what Carol asked. This is one of our dynamic embossing folders, so it's those super thick ones. You only use one cutting plate. So I've got my platform here, the folder with the hinge going through first, and one cutting plate when you're running these through your big shot. Ooh, somebody's asking me if I'm still here. I am still here. Yep, um, if you wash, oh, great question, Beth. Do I wash the folder right away? No, you don't have to. The ink will not stain it or stick to it. It's really kind of like magic. I was pretty surprised. That's a great question, Carol. Um, I, I'm just throwing my embossing folders that I'm using 
This is the gray one. I'm going to just throw that right in these baskets until I'm all done with this Facebook Live, and then I will clean them. So no, you do not have to wash it right away. Okay, are you ready for this? This is not pretty, people. I just want you to know it. Here we go. So this is what happened. Um, you can clearly see on this embossing folder that there's still ink left here. Like, it didn't press it down hard enough in this area. And I think the reason being is we have more sequins over here. And because this is a dynamic folder, the thick one that does the 3D thing, it's not letting it, it while, it's, while it's embossing it, which it's supposed to do, it's not letting the flat part hit here. So when I made my first card, my ink was much lighter and this just looked kind of like a little rustic and old and shabby chic. So I liked it. But then when I re-inked my ink pad, I didn't like it so much now because this is just like, that's like, wow, that doesn't look good, right? So <laughs> I thought, well, what am I going to do with this? So I took it and I turned it over. So this is the back side and... Um, these are the ones that are sticking up, and now these sequins on here are, are the ones that are um, indented. And I did this. Watch this, you guys. This is pretty cool. Oh my gosh. Isn't that pretty? I just did this a few times. You can do this as many times as you want. Whoops, my paper slid. So I didn't want that squiggle in there, but, you know, it is what it is. That's live TV. <laughs> And I just did this, and I'll show you. This is the sample that I came up with, and I really think that's cool. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's what I thought too. Thanks for the love. So here's the crappy side, <laughs> and then here's the really cool side. All right, so let me show you. Let me get this put in with the other folder that I'll wash later. I've got a um, cutting plate in between my legs. I need more arms here. So I did this a couple more times. Here's another one. I didn't have as much white hanging out here on this one, but I still am not very happy with it. Here's another one that turned out really crappy. I wasn't happy with that. But here's one where I kept wiping it until it was solid blue versus this. Where's my good one? Right here. This is the one that really turned out nice. So what I can tell you is you can play around with this one. But let me show you what I made here. We are going to make this card. Oh, hang on. I gotta... I have little cheat notes. I don't want you guys to think that I can just remember all of these dimensions off the top of my head because I am certainly not that amazing. <laughs> okay, I just want you to know the truth. So I've got my little cheat notes. So here comes the layers that I'm going to use to make a card with this background. This is our Whisper White Thick Cardstock. How many of you use Whisper White Thick Cardstock for your bases? Me, me, me. I, yes, Shelby, it does. The dark one here looks like a starry night, and it is very cool. I like the way the ink kind of hangs around each embossed little sequin, the edge of it, to make it like, like it's bursting with color, right? Okay, here we go. We are going to use Epic Celebrations. And Epic Celebrations is one of the free stamp sets during Celebration. And I don't know, my screen is not letting me see comments very well. So I wish you guys could reach out and go, Kelly, Kelly, <laughs> somebody asked a question. Um, Epic Celebrations, you saw the spinner cards I made with the set. It took a little while to get my groove going with the stamp set. Like at first I was like, oh, that's cute, but I don't know what I'd really do with it. And then once I started playing with it, it's so simple to create with this now. So we're going to use this set. And then the other set that I'm using for my inside greeting is the Super Duper. And this is just a great greeting set with some big birthday um, greetings in it. And also a few balloons and some little kind of eclectic little images. So I'm going to stamp again with my archival black ink. I'm going to stamp. I did a stitched shapes framelit here, and I'm going to stamp my tennis shoes, and perhaps I should have gotten them closer in the middle. <laughs> yep, there we go. That's much better, what you say. 
So this is what I used, our stitch shape circles, and then out of the silver glimmer paper, I did the layering circle scallop. So we have that. And now we're gonna come in with that aqua painter again. And, whoops, I'm going to use, oh, hang on, I just stuck my finger in the ink pad. We know what happens then. I told you we were gonna get dirty. I'm gonna use lemon lime twist. Make sure this is cleaned off. And I'm just gonna come in here and color my tennis shoes. And you guys, you would think that you could not do the most intricate stuff with um, these aqua painters because you would think that the tips were too big, but they really are not. I can get in between all these little shoelaces. And again, these are, the Stampin' Blends are, are becoming a fast favorite for me, but secondary, or I should say before those, this is the way that I color. I love this. And of course you have all of your ink colors at your fingertips. And you can also, you can also use markers. Take a marker and you color it on, like your even your stamp case, it'll wipe right off. Color it, color another color, another color. You can pick color up with your markers or with your aqua painter from your markers too. So this is the way that I love to color. Okay, there's my cutie patootie little tennis shoes. Hang on, I'm squeezing too hard again. I wanna get this cleaned off in case I have to use it again. All right, and then I've got a little strip here. Oops. This is, oh yeah, I didn't write this down. So there you go. This is one by four piece of Whisper White. And I'm gonna come in here with the black, you're awesome. And I always like to see, since this is a wood mount, is it on the block straight? I stamp down here and I line that black edge up with this line on my ruler and this is on here straight. So then I can come in here and have better success. Oops, I forgot to tell you something. Punch your end out first. This takes off quite a bit, the triple banner punch, and I do love it, but look how much it takes off the end. So you wanna make sure that you punch that first so you're gonna get this You're Awesome where it needs to be. Well, here we go, let's try this again. See if I can get it straight. Oh, I did good, woo -hoo. Okay, I'll wipe that off. So we've got that one and then this piece is Dapper Denim and it is three quarters of an inch by four also. I'm not going to punch that yet, I'm gonna bring in this Myths and Magic washi tape, you guys. Oh my gosh, this is stinking adorable. Look how cute it is. We've got white shimmer washi tape. We've got this white and blue striped. And then we've got this with all the stars on it. And I'm gonna take this and run it right down the middle of my piece here. So I'm trying to get it centered. That's why I'm kind of messing around here. I'm just gonna tear it off because it's washi tape and you can do that. I'm gonna fold that right over the edge and we're gonna bring our banner punch back in here. Now, the banner punch has room for a one inch, one and a half, and a two inch. It doesn't really have room for three quarters of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this in here and then I'm gonna turn it over and make sure that it's centered and straight. And we'll see how we do here. Otherwise, you could cut it with scissors, but geez, as long as I have this punch, right? Let's see what I got going on here. That looks good. <laughs> Just do it, Kelly. Okay, there we go. So, we're gonna do this and this. I need to put my shoes on here. I'm going to use a little fast fuse. You can use mini glue dots, whatever works for you, but I use something other than glue because glue and glimmer paper don't work together so well, right? Then I'm gonna grab a piece of tape. I have tape holding down my um, phone stand for videotaping so it doesn't tip over on us or me. <laughs> I don't want anybody hurt in the filming of this video. So I'm gonna do this. I'm just going to put this right on here. And I'm just gonna tape it down. And then we're gonna grab some dimensionals. Let me see if I can find, I don't know, I thought I had a whole card in here, but I guess I'm, oh, here's some. Put these on here. 
Yeah, I'm going to use probably three dimensionals on this big circle. And then one out here and one out here just to stabilize those. And again with your fingernail in the middle. Shelby loves washi tape. I do too. And you're welcome, Kathy, for the tip. Good night, Mickey Farley. She needs to probably go to bed. It's late where she is. Okay, let's get these glued together. So I, remember I didn't like this side, but I do like this side. <laughs> and this again is gonna be kind of a shabby chic look with the ink that I drug across the front of this. I've got a very thin margin of the lemon lime here. And my lemon lime layer is five and three eighths by four and an eighth. My white layer again is four by five and a quarter. And then we've got our Whisper White card base, which is right here. I'm going to do the inside of that before I glue anything on and I'll show you why in a second because it's kind of important. Here we go with this. Oops, you know what, I don't like this, hang on. My shoes are not lined up properly and I should have looked at that first. Okay, so I want my shoes to be kind of straight on the card here, so I needed to put my, <laughs> my banners. I needed to pay better attention, that's what I needed to do. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're straight. There we go, isn't that cute, you guys? Oh, super cute. Okay, and here comes my card base. I'm gonna stamp the inside and um, before I glue this on here because if I mess up this inside, I can simply fold my card the other way and cover it with this, right? So never glue your stuff together until you've done all your stamping. That's just a great tip. All right, here comes my hope your day is super duper just like you. And I'm going to stamp that right here. That turned out great. And then I wanted to do the guitar on the inside because, well, why not? We've got all these cool stamps, why wouldn't you use them? And then we're going to color, whoops, we're gonna color this with our aqua painter really quick. I'm just gonna come in and color my guitar lemon lime. And again, you guys can see how very quickly I can do this with an aqua painter, and it's just so simple. The frets, remember we talked about the frets last week? I didn't remember what those were called, but they're called frets. So, and I hear my husband's coming in now, so just be ready for that. He'll know that I'm on Facebook Live. <laughs> okay, and then before I finish, I wanted to put a little bit of washi tape carry that over from the front to the inside and I'm just gonna put it right here and turn over my base and cut this off just like this and so isn't that a spectacular inside holy cow just got one more thing left here then I'll show you my original card that I made with a little different background before I re-inked my dapper denim ink pad. Here we go. Yay. Becky, your mom is watching, but she won't come to stamp with you. <laughs> I know my mom won't either. My mom doesn't watch my Facebook lives either, but my aunt Sandy does, and she doesn't stamp either. So there. <laughs> okay. This is our metallic um, sequin assortment. And Yes, um, you know what, Donna? Donna just said she likes it better with the music in the background. Well, guess what I found out? I was lucky that YouTube would allow me to upload my videos um, to my YouTube channel because that music is copyrighted and my friend Barb did a test with her Facebook Live. She just like made a test one and it said that she could not upload her videos because she had copyrighted music in it. So YouTube like has some type of a filter that looks for music and then denies you access. So I am super glad that I did not have my music too loud and I'm super glad that Barb told me, someone else told me too, to be careful with that music. 
But I'm glad that I found that out because I would hate to not be able to upload these videos to YouTube or to get in trouble because it's copyrighted music, right? You guys see my little stick here? This is just a little skewer. And I took some of this glue and I just piled a little lump on the end of this and let it dry. Just set it someplace so it'll dry. And now, did I put a glue dot on here? Dot of glue on here somewhere? No. And now it's my little um, sticky stick thing. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Oh my God, he just walked up to the door. He's got this crazy face mask on that looks like um, a skeleton. Nice. Excellent. How's Facebook Live tonight? Facebook Live is going very well. Steve is in the house. I told them you were going to be coming home. Okay, so a couple little star. How's all my peeps out there? Steve wants to know how all his peeps are doing. And Arliss loves her sticky stick too. Good deal, Arliss. I'm glad you made one. Um, there's our cute little card using this front. Now, here's the other one that I did. And as you can see, it wasn't as dark, and I didn't have as much white spots down here. And I added a little blue to my tennis shoes. So both of these are pretty cool looking, don't you think? Yep, okay. There's our second one. Let me get this put away. I've got couple more things to show you guys if you're still hanging in there with me. Did you see I cut a whole bunch of these extra ones for this You're Awesome just in case I couldn't stamp it straight? <laughs> yeah, that's how I roll. I always want to be prepared because, you know, with Facebook Live, you do not know how this is going to go. For sure. All right. Let me grab... Oh, you guys are going to love these. I have one more card to make for you and then another card to show you. Okay. Whoops, I'm going to put my cheat sheet back on here. And then I'll hang this cheat sheet up here so I know what sizes I'm dealing with. And here comes our card stock layers. Okay, we'll set this right over here. Here comes our stamps. We're using Flirty Flamingo, obviously. And then I've got a couple stamp sets here that I haven't used in a very long time. Um, the Just Add Text, and this is a bunch of little greeting sets that are just really, really cool. I love the fonts in them. I love the flowers in here. This looks like a painter's palace or a puddle or whatever you want it to be. But we're gonna use a couple of these stamps and then I'm using the You've Me, Move Me and the Move Me Thinlets. And this is the one where you can stamp these images and then die cut this little grid and pull them up and they look like they're fluttering as they go. We've got um, a hummingbird and a butterfly. So this was a really cool, new release when the big catalog came out. And the only thing that I used here was this tiny little butterfly die and the little butterfly stamp. So that's what I pulled out of this. I just needed a small butterfly. Okay. Here comes our layers. We have Flirty Flamingo. This is four and a quarter by 11 and it's scored at five and a half. And then we've got a basic black piece. This is four by five and a quarter. And um, an inside white piece, which is this one. This is four by five and a quarter. And then the front piece is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So it's just gonna have a little sliver of border there. And then we've got Flirty Flamingo and Whisper White. Um, well, this piece we need. This is one and, wait. One and three quarters by five and an eighth. And then this is a scrap. And by the way, all of these dimensions and pictures of the cards, I've been posting them on my blog, www.astampabove.com, right here. I've been posting them on my blog on Tuesdays. So if you're looking for them, that's when you'll find them. All right, here comes our technique, again, with the embossing folder. This is the fluttering folder. And you're again going to feel which side you want to work. Now what I can tell you is 
there's no way I'm going to be able to ink up this front where the label is without getting ink all over inside my butterflies because this has the outside or the negative background raised. So I decided to go with the side that has the butterflies raised and use this one to do my cool technique. My cool technique. Listen to me like I came up with this. I did not. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. Okay, so I am going to use my Flirty Flamingo ink pad and I'm going to ink up my butterflies. You're gonna get a little bit of ink in between your butterflies. It's just, it's unavoidable. Here, oh, I think maybe I'm done with this. We'll see. No, I'm not really. Um, this piece is gonna go in here like this. And again, you don't want it to move and you wanna kinda get it in there straight because our butterflies are all kinda going up. Here comes our big shot. And your hinge needs to go through the machine first. Arliss, I'm waiting to see how you get the grid die. I have trouble with it. What do you mean the grid die? What does that mean? I don't know what that is. Um, give me some more tips there. Okay. This is not a dynamic folder. Even though it's a big one, it's not one of those super thick ones. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that. Are you ready to watch the magic happen? Ta-da! Okay, now we have tons of butterflies. And again, I'm just going to throw this in that basket with the other folders, and I'll rinse it off when I get done here. Okay, here we go. This little piece right here, I am going to stamp... The beautiful on it and I'm using the black archival ink again and I'm gonna kind of stamp this right over here and let's see if I can get it straight oh I did pretty good not perfect though let's try that again that's better all right do I have here we go I've got um, the in color markers are awesome this is from the In Color Markers, and this is from the Soft Subtles. So I've got So Saffron and the Flirty Flamingo. And now I'm really going to have to call out these beauties. What do you think, huh? Yeah, so I can see what I'm doing. Oh, and then I need a pair of pizzazz, too. Sorry, I need this one, too. So I'm just going to color all these little flowers so that this looks absolutely beautiful. So I colored all my flowers flirty flamingo. I colored the centers of my flowers with the um, so saffron. What are you guys drinking tonight? I have my Pepsi here. I need to wet my whistle a little bit. My mouth gets dry. I usually don't have anybody to talk to in my stamp room. So talking to you guys for an hour is a lot of talking. Plus, I did my team meeting today, and there's a lot of yakking there. I'm yickety-yakking all over the place. Then I'm going to come in with the So Saffron and do the center of my Cutie Patootie little flowers here. And then I've got my Pear Pizzazz. And I can use the big end, even though these leaves are really tiny. The reason why I can use the big end is because this is my marker that I keep in my office and don't allow anybody else to use it. What I find is that people really push too hard with these markers when I take them for classes and card buffets and stuff. And if you are good to the ends of your markers, they will literally last until they dry up, which takes forever, I might add. Um, I've only ever replaced a few of my markers due to running out of ink in them. But you have to be nice to them. You don't push hard with these tips, and they will stay pristine and really sharp. Okay, take off these glasses before I get dizzy. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this piece. And again, glue works best when you're gluing to an embossed layer. I'm going to glue this right onto the bottom of my butterfly layer. Make sure I get that lined up right. And then I'm going to bring in this black shimmer ribbon. And I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but it is shimmery, like it has glimmer in it. It's so, so pretty. 
This is how I always do my ribbon. I cut off a piece and I like to use real tape on the back, not a tape runner. Um, glue takes too long to dry for this ribbon. Ribbon doesn't really like glue that much, but um, I use real tape. And the reason why I know that tape runners don't work great on ribbon is because I get a lot of swap cards in the mail and they fall apart. If people just take the tape runner and then stick their ribbon to it, yeah, not so much. It's not a good idea, you guys. And then I'm going to bring in... If you leave this piece on your roll and cut it after you figure out how much you need here, you really do save a lot of ribbon. And I just tied that in a knot and it looks beautiful, and it is sparkly. Can you see how sparkly? And you can move it around to wherever you want it to go. We can, hang on here, I gotta get a hold of it. We can pull it down here. I like that right over our greeting. What else am I gonna do to this card? Okay, what is our scrap for here? This is for the little butterflies. Where'd my flirty flamingo go? Oh, here it is. Um, this is the detailed butterfly, and I'm just going to stamp a couple of these. And that die that you saw, where did those dies go? Right here. This little tiny butterfly die. Run that through the big shot on here. And through the magic of TV, I've already done that. Okay, there's our little butterflies. Then I'm gonna take my teeny weeny little mini dimensionals. If you don't have these, you guys need to get some. They are fabulous. You don't have to cut anything. You don't get your scissors all sticky cutting up dimensionals because you need a tiny little piece. They're fabulous. And I just felt like my card needed some type of little embellishment. And that's where I went looking for little butterflies, and this is what I found. So really any little butterflies will work, but just something really cute. Oh my gosh, what do you guys think? Oh, and Catherine says she uses Fast Fuse to adhere her ribbon or glue dots. Yep, those both work good too, but um, regular tape runners, not so much, right? Okay, here comes our black layer. And I'm just going to, and this is a really, really tiny little black border around here. And, you know, I don't care what color you put with it. Black always makes your colors pop. Thank you guys for the love. Oh, Kathy's drinking Mike's Hard Lemonade. Good for you. And then we're going to put this on the front of our card. Yeah, that black just pops that flirty flamingo, doesn't it? And then we've got some prettiness for the inside. And this is our inside layer. And again, I'm using the greeting from um, the Just Add text that says, next time you, well, first of all, this one says, you are so beautiful to me. And then it says, next time you think of wonderful things, don't forget to count yourself. How sweet is that? And because I don't have my label on here, I want to make sure that I'm going to not stamp this upside down. I'm going to give her a little test run right there. Oh, perfect. Nice and crisp. And then I wanted a butterfly on the inside. So in this um, You Move Me set, you get a solid image. And I'm just going to put it right there. And then you also get that detailed image that we did and die cut. Let's see if I can get this lined up. Hang on, I'm gonna pull this back a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Well, <laughs> it's not perfect, but you know what? This isn't Hallmark. So we are gonna glue this in here. Probably what I would do to fix that is to die cut one of these butterflies and put it over top, right? There's always a way to fix these boo-boos. And they do happen. What do you guys think? Isn't that just pretty? And again, just another embossing folder technique. All right, I have one more card to show you. And then I have, let's, let's look at some more samples here because, let's see, did I do some more stuff? I did. Oh, I have one more sample to show you. I'm not gonna make another card. I've made all the cards I'm gonna make, but I do have another card to show you. So let me, let me clean up my mess here a little bit so that you're not 
sitting here in my trash pile. That's what I always feel like. It's like I got a whole trash pile going on here. Oh, you know what? I'm still going to use this because I can show you this one too. Um, this is the Petal Burst Folder. And well, thanks, Mary, better than Hallmark. I love that. Um, and again, I'm going to see which one. This is the side where the little petals are debossed. So again, on the label side, I am going to take my Berry Burst and I'm just going to tap it on here. You don't want to push real hard because again, you're trying not to get ink inside the petal part. And then let's see, do I have a little white piece here? Well, I guess this one's pretty small. I'm just going to lay this on here, close it up. Don't let it wiggle around. Grab my big shot and hinge goes through first. Berry Burst is one of my favorite colors, obviously, right? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Mary Olson. Thank you, Tammy. Get this out of the way. Boy, I got a mess to clean up when we're done here. Who's coming over to help clean? <laughs> and here is our petals. So while this works, I'm not really excited about the ink getting inside these petals. And um, what you're going to find is your images that aren't quite as open as this. Like there's a lot of those little petals in here um, with embossing folders work better. Like the bricks. I mean, that worked great, right? This, this is again a little bit too open. So we're getting a little runoff of the ink here. Um, we know what happened with this one, but we made it work on the opposite side. So that's cool. Now let me show you this card. Oops, hang on, I got my cheat notes here that I need to keep with the cards. I don't, I don't confuse myself, believe me, that happens. Let me throw that in my basket. Get rid of that. Here is the last card, and that's just using a small piece. So this piece is...